So the purpose of this video is to <clears throat> clarify some uh, of the computations for the um, conveyor loop with Poisson arrivals. And as we stated in the previous lecture, um, we are now considering a, a case in which we have a conveyor that is moving uh, around uh, several stations. And then you have some stations that are loading stations and there are other stations that are unloading stations. And we want to determine the speed or the velocity for this conveyor for the process to work efficiently. But in this type of problem, we also have a, a probability associated with uh, an item arriving at a loading station I that needs to be delivered to an unloading station J. So in this slide, we have some of the parameters, but what I want to, that we discussed in the previous lecture, what I want to focus on is on these computations for the delta I. Delta I denote the re required flow rate items per unit in conveyor segment SI. So by definition, this delta I is the summation of for all k's and the summation for all l's of f k l z i k l. So f is the flow rate from station i to, to j and z is equal to one if the load from station k to l travels through a segment SI <clears throat> and zero otherwise. So this is uh, the, the piece that maybe is creating some confusion. How do you know if Z equals one or when Z equals zero? So that's the point that I want to, to clarify today. Um, so going back to, to the example, we have a, a closed loop unidirectional conveyor with 52 windows uh, shown in this example. <clears throat> and we, there are four stations are located around the conveyor. Two are loading stations. So this is a loading station and this one is a loading station. Um, and one and three are own loading stations. So one and three are own loading stations. And you can see that represented by the arrows. Uh, we have the lambdas. Suppose that lambda two equals 30 items per minute. So lambda two is the arrival, the arrival rate for that loading station. And then we have lambda four which is the arrival rate for, for uh, loading station four. So this one is 20 per minute. And lambda two is 30 per minute. And we have the probability is associated. Suppose that P21 equals 0.60 and P23 equals 0.40, uh, P41 equals 0.25 and P43 equals 0.75. So what that means is uh, for P21 is the probability that um, the loading parts from station two are going to uh, unloading station one. So in that case, that will mean See if we can change the color. So, so the probability that it goes from two up to one is 0.60. Okay, so that means that this 
part will go from station two and we'll go through all these windows, 28, 29, 20, 30, 31, 32, and, and so on until getting to window 11 and then it will be unloaded. Because as, as we stated in the problem, the conveyor runs or turns in a clockwise um, direction. And same thing for a probability to, from two to three. So that means that this will go from here to here. That's the probability two, three, and, and so on. So the question now is um, how do we obtain? So we can obtain the flow rate multiplying the lambda times the probability. So we have those flow rates identified here. Um, and then we have to name the segments. Um, with clockwise uh, rotation, the four segments on the conveyors are defined as follows. So segment one will go from here to here, goes from one to 11. So that's S1. Segment two will go uh, from here up to 28. So that's segment two. Segment three will go from 29 to 35. And the last one will go all the way to 52. So the way these segments are defined is that they will start in the window that follows uh, a station, and then they will end in one station. So that's why we start S1 after 52. It starts at one, it follows uh, a window with a station, and then it ends at that station one, uh, which is an unloading station. So, so the two segments that end with the loading stations are two and four. And given the Fij values for segment two and four, we can compute this delta. So for delta, we require the flow rate. And then Z, which was defined here, if the load from station K to L travels through segment SI. Okay, so I have some additional computations here. So, so again, ZKL equals one if the load from station K to L travels through segment SI. So we know uh, the segments. Um, so for example, for Z to one, that means that load from station two goes to one and this um, index here at the top is the segment that we are considering. Okay, so segment two. So the question is for, for you to go from two to one, do you have to cross uh, segment number two? So let's see. From two to one, um, so if you look at from station two to one, you go from two, you pass through segment uh, three which is the one that goes from 29 to 35. And then you pass through segment four, you pass through segment one, but you don't pass through segment two. So since you don't pass through segment two, the answer or the value for Z, two, one, two is equal to zero. We look at two, three, to go from two to three, you pass through segment three, but you don't pass through segment two. So that value is zero. Uh, from four to one, same thing. You go from here to here. So you don't go through segment two. So this is zero. But from four to three, you have to go all the way around 
and you have to pass through segment two. So that's why that Z value is equal to one. So when you look at this computation here, the only value that is multiplied by a non-zero coefficient is this one. So that means that this summation is equal to 15, which is what we have here. Uh, following the same process for delta four, uh, we look at segments two to one and see if they pass through segment four. So from two to one, yes, they pass through segment four. So this is equal to one. And then for the rest of the equation, their values for Z is gonna, are going to be equal to zero. So the only, the only value for the frequency that is multiplied by a non-zero coefficient is, is this one. So 18 times one is equal to 18. So that's the idea. That's how you compute that delta. And then knowing delta, then you can proceed to compute that um, speed um, for the conveyor by solving for, for uh, V it has to be greater than delta I plus uh, lambda I for I equals two and for I equals four. So we obtain 45 for I equals two and 38 for I equals four. So the conveyor speed must be greater than 45 windows per minute. 